Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in the series of machine learning with scikit learn. In today's video we'll be looking at one of the algorithms used for regression purpose as well as the most one not for classification but another application in that regression that is support vector regressor. Now in this video, we'll be looking at what is support vector regressor. The concept that how a support vector machine or support vector regressor can be used as a regressor and then looking into the problem and the example for the same. So here's our Jupyter notebook and a support vector regressor is a part of support vector machines which is mainly used for classification but the algorithm and the approach which is being applied for support vector machines is also helpful in using it as a regressor. Now the main feature how support vector machines work is by keeping a hyperplane and a maximal margin. Now for example if I have this one as a classification problem a support vector machines makes a hyperplane or the main line of division classifying the area above the line and the area below the line now if that part is considered as the hyperplane and the maximum margin error is dotted line that we can see is the one which classifies a specific range in which it can be included or excluded if we apply the same for the regression purposes the hyperplane changes according to the points present in the same. Now, if I have a linear distribution of data, it will be plotted with according to the hyperplane, followed by the margin that it gives with the regressor. If I have a non-linear plane, the hyperplane will change according to that and will be having the classification of the data. Now, let's see one of the examples for the salary value that we have been using to predict a specific and how much clear a salary can be predicted. So importing the necessary libraries and we have the data frame of the salaries. Now if we look at the data frame again, here are the positions, the level of experience or the years followed by the salary that we have. Now in this video we have to predict what will be the salary accurately for 8.5 years. That is the closest one that we can get. Now defining the x and the y values using the pandas ilog function followed by the scaling process. Now we have discussed the scaling process in the pre-processing. I do recommend you to watch it again and then you will be able to understand major concept behind it. So the scalar function should be applied for both x and y. That's why. Now the following error is just by converting the integer into a float type as a regular practice. Now after that once we have we call support vector machines inside that we call support vector regressor. Now as we can see sklearn is our main library inside that we have another class of completely support vector machines. Now if I wanted to call support vector machines I would have called svm but since we are working with regression we are calling support vector regressor. Once we have called that we make an instance of the support vector regressor that we are going to use and we are looking at some of the kernels it can provide to us. Now by the default the kernel is the method or the algorithm which the support vector machine is using your definition. Now kernel is by default is the RPF but we have another different kinds of kernels which are mentioned below and we can use different kind of kernels according to the best fit data that we have. We'll be looking at the examples in the coming time. So when I run this one, I get the random forest regressor followed by fitting that is training the value of X and Y. Now as we can see, 
the default parameters are set and it says the kernel is RPF by default. Once that is done, what we have to do is we'll be predicting the value for 8.5. Now, let's see. Once the value has been predicted in the YPred value, we'll be posting it inside the V. Now, as we can see, this is the best fit that the kernel was able to get us for the given distribution of values. Now, we can closely see that the value is close to the value of the points in the initial phase, but the curve changes after the level as we consider as one and one after that. Once after that, the value of the points increases to exponentially, but the curve is different. Now that was the best prediction our support vector regression was able to make for the specific data sets. Let's see what happens when we try to change the kernel value. Here we are and then changing the kernel value. Now let's opt for one of the most simpler one that is the linear value. What it does is it will by default set the hyperplane to the linear values. And let's see if how much that works out. Now, as we can see, the linear value does not fit at all with the points given as the predicted line is very linear and straight, but the distribution of point is very different. Let's try another polynomial value that we have. Now copying down the polynomial value. Now, once we change the value to polynomial, let's see the closest one we can get. Now, the polynomial regression took as the configuration of the maximum fitting polynomial it can predict according to the value that has been given to it. So, what I think what it did was the value that he has taken in from 0 0.5 to 1.5 is as the x square but what it did is i took as x power 3 as compared to just x square which does not include a very much specific clarity with the minimum values we have so that is how a different polynomial or the different kind of kernel is needed to be set by the time you're calling the support vector machines or support vector regression so let's change back to the kernel for the default one in which we were having the maximum results. So we have changed it to RPF again. And this is the closest, the results that we have got in support vector regressor. Now, as you can see, the overview of the model that we share for a specific regressor is usually the same. What we have to do is first we call the necessary libraries. Now it's a general practice to call NumPy, Matplotlib and Pandas and using to the according standard names. It's not standard but the community uses these names so it's much more recommended to use the same. Now what happens is by the time NumPy and Matplotlib runs in your background, your code is much more less, you know, prone to giving less errors to that so that's why so what happens is first we call the necessary libraries we call the data file we make the specific changes that we want to make separating the values and then calling the kernel functions and fitting the values at the end we try to predict the values and plot according to the situation if it's a regressor or if it's a classification that is all for support vector regressor and I'll be looking forward to meet you in the next class.